Hello, NCC viewers. I am the sports producer over at Suburban Community Channels, David Schuyler, and I am joined now by Brian Munter. Brian, thanks so very much for taking the time to sit down with me. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for having me. So, obviously, no two ways about it. The past few weeks, months even, has been weird for everybody. How have things been for you personally? Well, personally, yeah, it's definitely weird. Uh, one of our teachers said when, I, when it was initially starting that it was just a bizarre situation, and I think that's a good way to to put it. It's been bizarre. It's been good in certain ways, personally. Uh, a lot of time with family, um, you know, a lot of a lot of activities and meals together that we normally don't get because we're so busy. Um, but you you definitely realize how much you miss interaction and how, how much you know. I'm at. I've been in education now for almost 30 years, 27 years, and um, so much of that is because of the interactions that I have with kids and with, with teachers and coaches and you know adults. That that's why I, you know I'm in it because I really enjoy that. And so missing out on that has been very difficult. But um, you know we're we're all contributing in our own little way to try to get through this this mess, and uh, so try to look at it that way and and enjoy each day. So back when this all started and things shifted from going to school every day to now when most people are working from home, how did work change for you? Well, um, yeah, we were on spring break when a lot of this was starting. Um, and then the governor closed schools right before our spring break ended. And so um, I had been in the office quite a bit during spring break. I had not, I wasn't lucky enough to go to Florida or anywhere. Um, so I was there, but then, you know, the, that following week, um, I was in the office quite a bit, but now we've really, it's really ramped back where they, they are strongly encouraging us to stay at home absolutely as much as possible. So um, I have not been in much, much to the office at all. So it's turned into a lot of administrative computer work, Zoom meetings, uh, a lot of that. Um, and I've had some times to work on things that you normally can't do. Um, you just don't have time to do it, uh, but um, definitely miss the, the the kids, miss the competitions, miss the you know the, the coaches, you know educating our kids, variety of sports and activities, and so um, you know my job has changed quite a bit in that I'm you know isolated like everyone else, um, but uh, you know and missing that that social interaction, the interaction with kids, um, but doing a lot of administrative stuff now, so not nearly as fun. And you touched on it a little bit there, but uh, uh, what other steps has Tartan taken to ensure that students, faculty, and staff are making the most of the situation? Well, obviously we're um, going through distance learning, so our teachers are, are really trying to present material. Our, our superintendent put it in an interesting way. She said that, you know, we're changing a system of education that's been around for 200 years and you know in weeks um, and it's been my daughter and son I have a sophomore daughter and a senior son and they're you know working upstairs right now on their on their schoolwork and it's been interesting to see how how that material has been presented to them and how well it's being presented to them and how they're learning obviously they miss their friends and they miss school as well but they're really getting something out of it um, so, you know, I, I think our staff, uh, you know, our teachers and our administration has done a phenomenal job in, in adapting to this crazy situation and still, you know, putting kids in a position to, to learn. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're doing that. Obviously, our activities are on hold. We can't be doing anything. Uh, not, you know, the high school league is shut down until the 4th, you know, when the governor will determine whether or not we can come back. Um, and so there's no required events that they can do, uh, but they're finding creative ways to connect with kids, um, you know, through social media, through these, these types of apps like, uh, like Zoom, where they, they can video conference, you know, Google Hangouts, a variety of different ways. Um, but then giving them some things that they can do on their own voluntarily, whether it's workouts or some type of, you know, leadership activity or just a connection where they just get together and do some goofy goofy activity so um you know our you know our coaches and, and are just, like our teachers they're distance coaching and they're trying to to connect with kids where they really need it I and mean, right now this is really tough on kids um they're they're not only missing out on you know the physical aspects of competing uh but the mental 
you know, strain of being at home, and not being with their friends and missing out on some certain things. Um, and so, um, you know, our, our coaches and teachers are doing everything they can to try to connect with those, their students and um, know that we're thinking about them and know that we miss them and, and we'll get through it. Have you heard any any specifics from any of the spring coaches on like some of the activities that they're doing to stay active or like with those videos or, or training activities or, or games <clears throat> that they can do <clears throat> amongst each other or anything like that? Well, there's it's pretty limited as to what they can do. And by the way, it's, it has to be voluntary. They can't require the kids to do anything, but many of the kids will sign on and do things, but they're providing different workouts, you know, whether it's trying to throw a lacrosse ball with your dad and teaching them how to catch um, or, you know, just, you know, baseball's an easy one. Play catch with your, your sibling or your mom or your friend um, as long as you keep that social distancing. So they're providing different things they can work on and things they can do in their home um, or in their yard where they are, you know, which can be limiting, but um, it's been interesting to see some of the creative ways they're doing that. So they're doing the best in the in a tough situation mm -hmm. uh, tartan was also part of the uh the be the light movement that was all over social media that uh uh i think it was john malaya is his name shared yep. Yep. in the first place and was all over the news so uh yep. how did tartan's involvement in that come about and what did it mean for the school uh, you know i did see the the different tweets from john and throughout the it started in Texas, uh, but then there were many Minnesota schools jumping on the way. And it just sounded like a great way to just honor, you know, our, our kids and our community. Um, and so, but, you know, being that I have a senior, it's easy for me to see the effect it's had on seniors. And so I wanted to definitely um, shine some light on them and try to give them a little bit of a positive in this, this whole situation. And so, um, when I decided to do that, I tried to be, a, I'm a former math teacher, so I tried to be a little creative with numbers. And so, um, military time 2020, that's our graduating class 2020. So at 8 20 PM, uh, we flipped on the, on the lights and did it for 622 seconds, which we are district 622. Um, and so just to be a little bit creative, but then, you know, really wanted to, um, honor our seniors and, and so we did that for last Monday and um, didn't really know what to expect, um, how that was going to be seen or whether kids would think that was a, a neat thing or not. Well, um, about 8, 8.20 was when we were going to turn on the lights and um, Principal Thompson came up and she did a short little message that I was able to tweet out and, and I did as well. By eight o'clock, there was eight cars in the parking lot. And so, um, you know, it was 20 minutes away from when I was turning the light on. So it, I, it became very apparent to me quickly that this was something that was, you know, bigger than I thought and kids were appreciative. So I made my rounds in the parking lot, made sure that kids stayed in their cars and they were very accommodating and did exactly that. They stayed in their cars and um, we ended up having a lot, a lot of people there, a lot of cars there. Um, but um, whether it was a mom that stopped and just thanked thank me for, for doing this, you know, to give them um, something positive to look at, to the, just to look in the kids' eyes, you know, and um, as little as flipping on lights in the stadium really had an impact, and I think it's a great thing that, that has gone on throughout the state. Um, and now it's even, you know, some are, it's morphing to honoring not only our students and our seniors and our staff and our community, but even the, the first responders. and. Um, you know, the different healthcare workers and even people that are, you know, making meals, um, all, the, all the frontline people that are, that are, um, you know, really helping our community and helping those in need, uh, shining a light on them too. So, you know, one of the things in my message was I wanted kids to know too that, yeah, you, you can be a light you can be a light to even just one other person. If you can find in the day a time to, um, to, to shine a little light on someone, make their day better, maybe make it a little happier, you know, you've accomplished a big thing in that day. So um, 
it, it's, it can be very as simple and little as that to as big as the movement is throughout our state and throughout our country. So neat thing, really great, great idea. And uh, it's been cool to see how it's, how it's um, taken off. Yeah, it's just an awesome idea. Something normally you wouldn't think about it at all, just having stadium lights on and suddenly it's blown up into almost every school in the state. I think I've seen with the football lights and, and it was awesome to see Tartan and North participating in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a really neat thing, and it was it was enjoyable to do. And if it you know if it just made a few of our seniors feel good about that that time, that that was well worth it. Well, Brian, thank you very much for giving us an update. Hopefully, all of this winds down soon, and we might see students back on the uh, the fields and tracks playing the spring sports and and getting back in the classrooms. I would love to see that as well. We we really miss our kids. We miss being at school. Um, and, and I'd really love to see something, you know, as much as we can give our seniors and our students uh, for the rest of this year, that's what we're looking for. But really appreciate, you know, all that you guys do for us and highlight our, our kids and, and the things that they accomplish. So appreciate your time as well. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thanks, Brian. Thank you.